Thank you very much, Vazalan, and uh, we are continuing. Time is not on my, on my side. Uh, we started this three weeks ago with this series on the uh, dry season, and I think for those who don't remember, this is the book that I I, I, I read. Uh, this is what what was inspired me, that inspired me to talk about uh, the dry season as this man who was abducted and spent six years in the desert and came out as a changed man uh, six years later. I want to talk about the religion and the faith that he was following. But this is what happens when you go through a dry season. You come face to face with God and your values uh, get exposed or you get new values when you get a confrontation with God. And so the, going through the dry season, uh, I will just give you the few verses that I will not go through now and come back to them later on. It's Ezekiel chapter 37, this is 1 to 14, it's on our, on our poster, but I'll just read verse 3 only. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. And I just want to, as part of our message for this morning take you also to the gospel of john chapter 11 verse 25 and this is jesus speaking jesus said unto her i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet he shall live for the prior bones shall live again for our theme this morning this sermon series was preached over two months in 2019 starting from the 3rd of november 2019 until the 29th of December 2019. As I was preparing my sermon, I, I looked back and looked at my notes from that year. And I looked at the extract from the last sermon on the 29th of December 2019. And this was my concluding remarks as I preached this message. It was a short message, just on the eve of uh, New Year's Day 2020. And I said, as we bid farewell to 2019 and prepare ourselves for the new year, 2020. We need to focus on two questions that we need to reflect on seriously. These are purpose and meaning. And the rest I wish to, the rest I wish to leave you with as you end up on these two questions is in, if you can see, mute the person, please. Uh, these are the two questions uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, verse 10. Incidentally, can somebody write the same verse? as he was doing offering this morning. And it reads, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. And I said, we have work to do in 2020. That was last year. Do you know your purpose in Christ and understand the meaning of your existence? May the Lord use you immensely in 2020 in your sphere of life and influence according to his will and purpose. And this is the prayer I prayed at the end, that Lord, thank you for your great love for me. Thank you for the utter transformation you have brought into my life. May you show me what you have prepared in advance for me in 2020, so that I may live my purpose and find meaning to my life. And things changed. You now I was one of those lives that changed my life and things happened personally in my own situation. But just under three months later, boom, there was a lockdown and our lives have changed ever so much. That which we planned for in 2020 didn't happen as we thought. We've been going through a dry season ever since. And as the bishop said two weeks ago, we met David in the wilderness. And last week we had the grumbling of the children of Israel in the wilderness. And today we meet Ezekiel at the Valley of Dry Bones. And Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14 reads. Verse 37, chapter 37, verse 1. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. And verse 2, he led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. These were the dry bones. 
Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Verse four, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says, look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I would put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. The New King James Version says, I'll put thin you, you know, it's like the tendons. Now put breath into you and you'll come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together, attached themselves as complete skeletons. I like the New King James Version. It says the bones came again bone to bone. Then as I watched muscle and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, in the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. Verse 10, Ezekiel says, so I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. We could have been saying the same thing this past few weeks. One of the top uh, bankers was sharing in one of the WhatsApp groups this week. And he said, when I looked at this, I became hopeless. I lost all hope. And I said, what is going on in our country? Our nation is finished. Quoting Ezekiel. Verse 12, therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. And I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. I wish you could say the same thing to the 66,000 of people who have died of COVID and go to the graves and raise them again. If it were possible, that's what we could do. He says, then I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. But God was speaking to his people, those who were taken into bondage, into exile. 40 years, they were in exile. When this happens, so my people, you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 14 says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I've done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. These bones shall live again. This is our hope for the future. We need to be reassured that all shall be well. Last week we heard about the grumbling in the wilderness. This week we stand in the valley of dry bones. They are not two different seasons of valleys. Both are the valley of COVID-19. How fortunate are we today that the valley of dry bones is one of our assigned scripture readings. When I penned this theme for the month, I didn't know that this week we'll speak about the dry bones. Just a week after what has happened in our country, a moment of shame. It's exactly what we, our country, and our world need to hear, especially after the events of this past week. The Veil of Dry Bones is a story of hope. It's a story of promise. It's a story about a people who have a future. If all shall be well, is the theme that runs through Psalm 23. And then you shall live, is the theme that runs through the Valley of Dry Bones. Mortal men, can these bones live? The Lord asks Ezekiel. I suspect it's a question most of us are wondering about. Can we recover from this pandemic and the carnage we have seen over the past few days? And if so, when and how will that happen? What will our future look like? Ezekiel responds, but he doesn't answer the question. He just says, 
oh Lord God, you know. I so appreciate the honesty in what Ezekiel says. I hear his uncertainty. I sense his feeling of powerlessness. I picture him looking around and shaking his head at the overwhelming enormity of it all. God only knows if these bones can live again. That's how I feel every time I read the newest numbers of cases. We saw 20,000 new cases every day, 25,000. And this past 24 hours, I saw that it's 14,000. And we know when it's 14,000, about 3 to 5% of these people are going to end up in hospital. And some of them are going to die. The death, job losses, and financial hardship. And now the looting and the senseless deaths we've experienced this past week. And I'm guessing you might feel the same way. Today, we are all in Zekiel. I know how easy it is to focus on and despair over the number of tribe bones. But I also know that it is not the final story of God and God's people. So this morning, I just want to give you some other numbers to focus on, 10 and 3. They are sacred numbers. They are numbers on which you can bet your life and future. And it would be a good bet. Ten times God promises to do something about the tribe bones, even to the point of repeating God's self. And these are the ten things, promises that God gives Ezekiel. He says, I will cause breath to enter you. I will lay sinews on you. I will cause flesh to come upon you. I will cover you with skin. I will put breath in you. I'm going to open your graves. I'm going to bring you up from your graves. I will bring you back to your land. I will put my spirit within you. And lastly, I will place you on your own soil. These are the promises that God gives us as we go through these difficult times. Ten times God promises life and wholeness. Ten times God promises return and homecoming. Ten times God promises that the dry bones of this valley are not our final reality. Through those ten promises, at the beginning, in the middle, and the end, God says, and you shall live. You shall live is the river of reassurance that flows through the valley of dry bones. God says it three times, and you shall live, and you shall live, and you shall live. Those promises and reassurances are the path we walk in this valley. So the next time you read the numbers in the news, the next time you get scared, the next time you feel anxious and overwhelmed, remember those are the numbers. 10 and 3. Remember God's promises. Remember God's assurances. And then listen for the rattle. The rattle of the bones coming together, bone to bone. When I read this message, I remember Huma again. When he says, when the train comes, when you hear the good, and you hear the, 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 the it rumbles and rumbles, and you hear, you know, could sing that song by Huma again. And he says, hoo, hoo, you listen, listen to the train, and the train coming from Josie to from Devon to Houghton. It's like the bones rattling. Rattling sounds like faith and hope and love. Sounds like courage and the refusal to be ruled by fear. It sounds like people spring, Psalm 23. It sounds like church bells ringing in remembrance. It sounds like helping those who have lost jobs or their work. It sounds like patience, gentleness, and compassion for others and ourselves. It sounds like support and care for healthcare providers, those who are in the front line and the essential workers. It sounds like people asking you, are you okay? Do you need anything? It sounds like people smiling and laughing as they connect to Zoom. It sounds like a text message saying, all shall be well. It sounds like an openness to the future. It sounds like life and life abundant. So rattle this valley. Let's rattle this valley like it's never been rattled before. And as I conclude, repeating some of the things. The bones are associated 
with dead bodies or with death itself. Dry bones symbolize a human body that has been dead for an extended period of time. In some cases, for hundreds or thousands of years. By this time, it is impossible for anyone in the right frame of mind to contemplate any means by which some bones will come to life again. So this was the situation in the valley of dry bones when God asked Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Knowing well that it is impossible by any human means for those bones to live, but also being conscious of the fact that you are standing before the one that created the universe by the power of his word. Ezekiel tactically answered by saying, oh Lord, you know, as we go through these difficulties, we ask ourselves, will we go through this pandemic? Will we rebuild our nation? Will the walls of Jerusalem be rebuilt? Like Nehemiah said, let us go back and rebuild the broken walls. Then the Lord asked the prophet to prophesy to these bones. And in Ezekiel 37 verse 7, as soon as he prophesied, this happened. There was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. I therefore pray that everything that stands as these dry bones in your life and every symbol of death in your family, hear the word of the Lord. Be restored back to life now in the name of Jesus. In Ezekiel's vision of dry bones brought, brought back to life by God's spirit, the resurrection of the bones is used as a symbol. Ezekiel's vision is not directly related to life after death, but rather with the salvation of God's people from captivity and exile. Just like us, we we'll come back from the pandemic. We may go back to a new normal. Some people are locked up in a strange land, enjoying the pleasures of sin. Some are addicted to humble behaviors, burdened by their conscience and far away from the spirit of God. They are dead like dry bones. However, as the spirit of God sends the breath of life into them, they are returned to their creator can be likened to the new life rising from the grave to anyone that is in bondage, captivity, or exile, to anyone that has been displaced from his or her position, to anyone that has been told that he or she has reached a point of no return in life. Know this. Let there be a noise and a shaking from heaven that will set you free from now on, in Jesus' name. The bones were sitting quietly in their forgotten state. Fully surrendered to the power of death that held them abound. They were without any hope until God told Ezekiel to prophesy to them. One more time, I pray that the wind of the Holy Spirit blow against every agent of death that is holding your life and destiny. Be bound right now in the name of Jesus. May this be the beginning of real progress in your life and henceforth and be unstoppable in Jesus' name. I pray that God let everything about everyone that is sitting here, listening to this message here on, on Zoom or on WhatsApp or later on, that you may live again and that dry bones may live again by the grace and the power that we have in Jesus' name, amen.